Once I ran out of money to take her, there was no more phone calls as to how she was. I'm free from living lies Free from my own deception Headed the right direction I walk through the fields of mud Sometimes it's not what we say, but it's how we say it. How you say something can put people on even ground, both technically and emotionally. And that way, people feel safe making decisions. And they feel supported when things don't go to plan. For the beagle named Molly that we're about to see, things didn't go as planned. Sometimes we do uh, exams like on the porch. Sometimes we do it like just, it's wherever you think is best. I think, I think inside is okay Perfect. because she's really, she seems very weak. Like, Does she? not like herself. I see what you're doing. Hey, Gabe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now this poor girl is in distress. Molly has not had a normal poop in six months. When we, when we took him to the vet, he had said, she's constipated, I've never seen a dog that constipated before. I so I took it as that, because he said there was nothing lodged, nothing, and he did do some blood work. It's very common for us to hear of a dog who's straining with nothing coming out. I have no doubt that's what Molly looked like in the beginning. Since that point in time, has she looked better, same, or worse? In the last week? Yeah. Worse. Way worse. worse. Yeah, she's, this is the worst I've seen her. So what should okay. we be trying today to get her relief, like today? Right, right. Like, not like two weeks from now, but like, just right. like, tonight. <laughs> and, and that's oh, the goal for her. The if goal, she could yeah. just feel better tonight, I'd feel better right? tonight. That's you know? the, I could see her, I could see what she feels like, regardless of the underlying cost, she needs to feel better tonight. And there was no compassion like there wasn't he seemed nice but there was no like you know let's make her comfortable let's make her like the words that you're using there's no there was no and that's kind of what made me even leery about going back because there wasn't any of that you know like mm. the words that you're saying to me about let's make her comfortable tonight I, I didn't hear that and I that's what I want people are unique and their lives are complicated but the thing that people who care have in common they want to know that you care and this doesn't come from technical expertise or always being right. It comes from how you say what you say. We start by getting a fecal sample, of which we had many to choose. A physical exam and a review for x-rays should help us figure things out. Madeline, my six-year-old daughter, was here to help. She came along during our vet camp week. I don't want to shield her from suffering. I want her to recognize suffering and be a person that does something about it. Your arms, gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm just gonna, I just wanna make sure you don't sneak when we're poking and prodding you. Okay, Maddie, you can come over here. The reason why I want you over here is we're gonna do a physical exam and when we do an exam, guess what? What? Uh, we, we want to find out exactly what's going on and we're gonna go step by step for her, okay? So her iris is brown, her sclera is white, conjunctiva is red, so they're both proper on both sides. We're checking her lymph nodes over here. She feels normal. Do you think she's got cute little teeth? Then we're gonna look through. We're just gonna be very thorough. She's got a butt problem today, but we're looking at absolutely everything. We make no assumptions about what the problem can be. We start fresh. We start from a clean slate, okay? We really wanna find the issue, and that means we're just gonna be looking at everything. Lymph nodes feel good. So do you know what lymph nodes are? Lymph nodes are a part of your immune system. They're a part of your immune system. And sometimes if they get bigger or smaller, it's a way to figure out what's going on. Sweetheart, don't you worry. Come have a listen and tell me what you think. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna lift her up and then we're gonna check her abdomen. This might not be her favorite thing, okay? Oh, it's sore. Sore. So usually we take a temperature, but it's yeah, in the butt. Her I butt know. has been on fire for six months. So it's like, we can't um, 
ask her to do that. We're gonna make an educated guess based on her armpit temperature. Potentially, and then this is just gas that's in there. So the poop stops there. Sometimes if they're if they got something called obstipation, which I've never seen for a dog, what that means is that there is so much poop in the body. There's so much poop here that the colon is just going wide, 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 wide. Oh, wow. She didn't get that going on. Do I see any masses or displacement effect or things pushing other things in her body like cancers and things like that? I don't. I don't actually. Yeah, that's, um, that's definitely a good thing. But the, the key thing about this uh, x-ray is this. It's a window into her past. It's a window of what her poop used to look like. Right. And what her poop used to look like is I used to make solid poop. Right. Solid poop, solid poop, solid poop, solid poop. So. This, in a sense, is our goal. Then we gotta get her yeah. her colon back to be producing that. Hmm. I don't think that constipation is or was her problem. Now, why would I say that? Over time, you learn what falls on your radar. Let's take this cat for example. Someone calls in and they say, my cat is straining in the litter box. Now this cat could be constipated, absolutely, but what's on my radar? The first thing on my radar is, is this cat struggling to pee? You say strain and my brain immediately thinks, make sure you don't have a urinary tract blockage, which is an emergency before anything else. Now what's the dog version of that? If someone calls in and says, my dog is straining, yes, it absolutely could be I'm straining because I can't go poop, but my radar doesn't say straining from constipation. The first thing I'm thinking of is there's nothing in the tank. You're straining because your colon is on fire. You say I think he's constipated. My brain thinks I think he's got colitis. Number one sign of colitis, straining, and eventually diarrhea. While Maddie makes a friend, Tara analyzes the fecal sample under the microscope. This is all like fecal yeah. matter, so like, it's a moving. lot of bacteria. Yeah, it's so moving. Like, currently it's moving because okay. of the uh, fluid that I put on Right. It. They're pretty oh, cool right. stuff. None. Oh, none, none that I saw. Okay. So what, um, so no Jardia, uh, no Campy in there? So we're going to take some of the poop we did today and we're going to send it to the lab. Based on her current assessment and results, we're going to discontinue treatment for constipation and begin treatment for colitis. We start by explaining that it's worthwhile to try, what to look for if it works, and what it means if it doesn't. Mom's pretty happy with that. We start off with vitamin B12 and Panicure. Panicure is a dewormer. Even though we didn't see specific parasites on the fecal analysis, we don't take any chances, especially after six months of this going on. A big part of this is making sure that Molly is a willing participant. Any medication that we give, we want her to volunteer for. So we train her to accept needles while getting massage or getting some food. Vitamin B12 goes in by injection and mom did great. To the mix, we add Tylosin, then Metronidazole. Both medications very useful in colitis. Again, we use treats to our advantage to make sure that Molly is always volunteering to take these medications. Right now, we just want her to start eating again, but in time, nutritional counseling will be part of her solution. So it's hard to know how these things go, and I'm really anxious to find out what's gonna happen.